Hello everyone and welcome to the garden and more importantly welcome to our tulip bed here our little uh, 4 by 15 foot tulip bed last fall I planted about 1200 tulips in this bed and wow talk about a crazy colorful display of tulips this year um, just like I did the daffodil tour video, a lot of y'all wanted to see the complete tulip tour video as well. So here it is. I'm doing my best. I did want to say thank you very, very, very much to everyone who has taken the time to watch those videos. I know that they're very long. These ones are very long. Uh, they definitely take a lot of work to put together. And I'm not the most uh, tech savvy person on the planet, that's for sure. So it is a little difficult. So I am very, very thankful. So let's get into this. Let's start back at this with this at the very, very beginning when the tulips first started to open. And these are in the order of which they opened here in the yard. With tulips, they all kind of open at the same time. But the first one to open here was one called Avant Garde. Ooh, isn't that fancy? Anyway, avant-garde is a uh, early double. It's kind of a white creamy color, very beautiful. It did have a little bit of a subtle scent and the stems were nice and long. I really, really liked this one. I would definitely grow it again. I love that kind of creamy yellow color on the inner bits. Uh, such a nice touch in terms of um, just, you know, working in arrangements. Next, we have a variety called Chato. Shadow, I'm not quite sure. It's probably Italian or French or something like that, and uh, I don't have that that uh, accent for that, I guess. But these are beautiful. This is one that I've wanted to get my hands on for a very long time. Nice stem length. Uh, more than anything, I think the most notable characteristic about this is how double it is and fluffy and its immense color. Like, this color is so vibrant and so intense, it's really something special. Next up on this tour, we have a new to me variety. This one is called Double Price, which is kind of a weird name for a tulip, I think. I didn't pay double price. This was pretty much the same price as the other tulips that I bought, um, but it was very nice. It was a little bit on the short side here in my yard. Not sure if that was just my growing conditions, but I did love the color. It's kind of this nice blend of a lilac pink, purple lavender color. Uh, very hard to describe, but I think the camera does a very good job at showing it here. Um, the next tulip that we have is one called Bella Blush. Bella Blush turned out to be one of my favorites. Um, I very seldom grow single tulips just because they're not really my favorite thing. I love the big doubles, but these Bella Blush were absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I've been looking for a true kind of blush pink single tulip for a long time and these definitely fit the bill. Um, they also held in the garden really well. Uh, they got a little bit darker as they aged but they looked phenomenal in a lot of different arrangements. I really really like this one especially for an early single like that. Negrita Parrot was the next uh, tulip to start opening. This was the first of all the parrot tulips. For some reason, my stems were a little bit shorter this year on these parrot tulips. Specifically, I've grown these in the past and had good stem length. Um, but they were still usable in arrangements and things like that. But just something to note. Uh, my favorite thing about these is always the color. I just love this shade of purple that these open in. And not to mention how feathery and ruffled that the flowers themselves are. Very, very nice. Um, always one of my favorites, especially for arrangements. Um, I just wish the stems would have been just a little bit longer this year. Uh, hopefully I'll try again next year with different results. The next tulip to open here in the yard we have is one called Akun. Um, I'm not quite sure why I ordered this one. I've been trying to kind of step out of outside of my, you know, what I like box. And red flowers usually aren't my personal preference. These are very bright, as you can see. They're very vibrant. Um, the middle is a yellow, and uh, the outer petals have this kind of tint of a pink red. What's interesting is these remind me very, very, very much of one called Queen's Day that I had by mistake a couple years ago uh, from a mix-up. They look almost identical, but this is this was labeled Akun. Next, um, we have, of course, uh, can you guess, another double tulip, another early double. This is Akabono. Uh, this is actually one that I didn't order. I'm not quite sure uh, what this replaced, 
but this was sent as a replacement for something and we got this one again which is fine with me again it's a yellow that's the main reason that I didn't order it again this year but the stems are strong the flowers are beautiful they're excellent for cut flowers they're nice and tall um, if yellow with this kind of unique red kind of outline around the petals um, is your thing then I think these would be a good choice they're just personally not my favorite, but they still looked great in our donations and everything, so no complaints there. The next tulip we had to open here in the yard is one called DJ Parrot. Uh, DJ Parrot was another one that I grew in the past. It first opens up with a bit of red and kind of yellow edges, and over time those edges kind of fade to white instead of yellow, and it turns into something very, very pretty. These flowers are also enormous. Um, these are one of the largest parrot tulips that I've ever grown. It's just, they open up so wide and they're huge, like bigger than my hand. They're enormous. Um, I do have trouble picking them before they bust open real big like this. Uh, you just gotta be right on it apparently, but hopefully I'll get better at that in the future. So DJ Parrot's pretty nice. Next up in the garden, we have one called Parrot King. You'll notice I had a lot of parrot tulips this year, comparatively speaking to last year. Uh, parrot King was this beautiful shade of orange. Uh, when it first opens, it's kind of this lighter orange color. And as the blooms age and get a little bit older, uh, that light orange kind of fades to more of a darker, more intense orange. Um, here in my yard, it just seems like I have to, you know, pick the parrot tulips right on time or they're going to bust open. And I think that's one of my main complaints with parrot tulips is it's my fault. You know, I'm a little bit tardy to the party every single time I'm picking the flowers. And especially when I want to show them uh, to all y'all too. So that's a little bit of an issue too. But otherwise, very beautiful. I just love the markings on these parrot tulips. Um, they're just so gorgeous. The next tulip uh, I have here is one called Columbus. Columbus is one of my favorite varieties of tulip. They are a double variety. Uh, they're a brilliant kind of vibrant pink color and they have this unique white edging that is so incredibly beautiful. Something about this color combination that I just love. When they first open up, that white is a little bit of a kind of creamy yellow color which gives it a little bit of extra gorgeousness. Um, but I think this will always be one of my favorites. They are just, oh, it's so pretty. I love just the color variation in these. Uh, they're a little bit hard to use in flower arrangement, at least in my experience, just because I don't know what to combine with them. But in terms of stems and everything, the stems are long, they're strong, they're just, they're beautiful. Next, we have another one called Pink Vision. This is actually another parrot tulip. And uh, much like the Parrot King that I already showed you guys, uh, this one just opens up a bright and brilliant pink. You can see here in my yard, there they are, big and open, and I missed the picking window for these big time. I mean, I mean, I was able to pick these because donations, it doesn't really matter because they get used immediately. But in terms of like florists and stuff, I'm always too late when I pick these. I'm working on that, I promise. Anyway, these are gorgeous. I love the color and I love the feathering of these. The petals are just so unique looking. I can't get over it. Next up is yet another really, really popular one among flower farmers. This one is called Drumline and you can see why. Uh, Drumline is very similar, I think, similar to the Columbus. Rather than being a pink, it's more of a kind of darker reddish pink color. Uh, it's very pronounced in person. It might be a little bit difficult to see the difference here, but we still have that same outer kind of white edging that's very, very lovely. And uh, again, these are really fun to use in flower arrangements as well, just because that extra edging, the color just gives it a bit of dimension that's kind of unexpected and fun to play with. The stems are always strong. These are always really, really reliable too, which are, I really like and um, really consistent. Next, we have one called um, Apricot Parrot. Uh, this is another one of the parrot tulips. It's very similar in appearance, like the texture-wise texture, texture -wise and the kind of feathering of the petals um, that you see to the pink vision and the, um, the king one, the parrot king that I showed you. But the coloration on these is just a little bit different. It's kind of like a mixture between the two. There's a little bit of orange, a little bit of pink in there. Um, 
really really nice kind of a salmon color we still have those yellow centers in the middle with the dark uh, I guess stamens I'm not sure sorry I also grew one called jacuzzi this year and I was really really surprised it turned out to be one of my favorites uh, it's this lavender color unfortunately um, this planting failed and I only had about three or four flowers from the planting but I'm glad because it was enough to see that I love this color. Uh, I planted a lot of lavender flowers this year and I was so surprised that I, I love this lavender color. It's uh, just, I guess I'll add it to my list of when I'm buying flowers. I'm going to definitely try to grow jacuzzi again next year. I really, really like this. I'm disappointed that I only had a few flowers from it though, but fortunately it was enough to make an arrangement. The next tulip to begin opening in my garden was one called was one called Double Shirley. Again, staying in that kind of uh, same lavender uh, category where I was ordering lavender flowers. I've grown this one before. This is very pretty. It's white, but uh, the kind of edges and it's got little splashes and veining of kind of this beautiful lavender color. It looked very nice with both the jacuzzi and several of the different pink varieties that you will see later in this video. It looked very nice with those. Uh, this year the stems were nice and strong and the plants were nice and healthy. Last year I had a problem with the health of the plants. They were kind of uh, short, but this year they were nice and big and tall. And I loved that about these. Um, these were definitely a keeper. I can't wait to grow more of these in the future. I just, I love the patterning on it. Um, they're so, so cute. Next we have one called... Rococo or Rococo, I'm not quite sure. This was actually another one that was a replacement for something I ordered. It is a red parrot. Uh, red parrots, just it's just not something I would normally go with. It's very pretty and I'm sure, um, I just don't know what I would arrange it with. I need to really expand my color horizons here in the yard. The next flower is a classic and one of my favorites. It's the Amazing Grace Double Tulip. I've grown Amazing Grace Doubles for about three years now and I just love them every year. They're such a unique color combination between like a lavender and a pink, but they're more pink. It's hard to explain. Uh, the video here does it justice pretty good, but they are so uniform and consistent and they look like big peonies. Uh, nice and strong stems too. Great vase life. I just can't say enough good things about these Amazing Grace tulips. Antra Siet, I guess. I don't know how to say these things. You you know this by now. Uh, this is one of my new favorites. I purchased this one because I was attracted. It was like this deep burgundy uh, double. It looks like a big peony. Um, even though I don't really like red tulips and red flowers too much. This deep burgundy color is so alluring. It goes great with so many different colors too just to give that deep dark contrast. I know when you think of spring you think of pastels, at least I do, uh, but this is something really special. I really like these. I really want to grow more of these. And these had a little bit of a scent in my yard which I really like too, so that's a good quality too. Great Barrier Reef was, again, yet another one of my favorite flowers this year. This one was brand new to me as well. And here I am with the lavender again. These lavender tulips are really just hitting it for me. Um, these are a double fringed tulip, which is interesting because usually my fringe tulips are real, real short. And these were really tall and really awesome and really vibrant and beautiful. And they went with seemingly everything. They went with the pastels. They went with the different vibrant colors. Um, I love the outer edges of the petals that are a little bit darker. And it kind of gives that shadow effect in the middle. These are so, so pretty. I think these might be my favorite one from this year. My new favorite. One of my new favorites. I love these. Great Barrier Reef. Awesome. Next up here in the yard we have one called... La Belle Epoque. Maybe you've heard of it. Have you heard of it? If you've been around flower farming circles, I'm sure you've heard of this one. Uh, these bulbs are even sometimes very hard to get a hold of. Uh, these are beautiful. There's no denying it. There's this beautiful kind of creamy peachy pink color and uh, the outer petals and the deep in the petals have this pink kind of purple hue that just is stunning. It plays with the light and shadows and everything. It blends with almost everything. 
Uh, I used these to make my first flower garland ever. You can see that in the other video here on the channel. Um, I can't say enough good things about these. The stems are strong. They're just gorgeous. The only thing I don't like about them is if you wait too long, you do get that kind of black pollen that falls all over everything. I'm not a fan of that. But otherwise, I think uh, these flowers are a masterpiece for sure. Next, we have a single tulip. This one is called Jumbo Beauty. And wow, what a surprise. Another single tulip that I like. Maybe I really do like single tulips and I just didn't know it because this Jumbo Surprise or Jumbo Beauty, sorry, are amazing. They held for so long in the garden. Um, they, I had plenty of time to pick them. And I even let a few kind of just linger in the garden and they, the color change is gorgeous. Uh, I ended up with these big bright pink blooms with this white edging. Stunning, especially for landscape. Who would have guessed? Next is a tulip called Merit. Uh, it is a single tulip and unfortunately this tulip was one of the ones that failed here in my yard and I only managed to get four flowers from it. Uh, but I thought I would show you what these little four flowers look like just in case you were interested in growing Merit. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't have enough experience with it to really kind of pass judgment on it, but here's what they look like. Uh, next up, we have one called Perfect Wedding. This is yet another one that was kind of in the failed area of my garden. Uh, as you can see, these blooms are not that impressive. The stems were small. The plants in general look a little bit weak. I'm not quite sure what happened in this area of the yard. Uh, but they are a beautiful kind of soft baby pink color, which I guess would be perfect for a wedding, which is why they call them perfect wedding. Rather than opening up like nice and full, like a double tulip usually does, these stayed closed like this. I, I was waiting and waiting for them to open and they never opened. I'm not sure what's going on. I might try these again in the future just to try them out. I do like the color, so uh, I might give them another chance. Um, in the yard maybe next year maybe not next year I don't know uh, I have to make my list for orders soon next up to bloom was another reliable classic flower this is Fenola I'm again I'm not sure if I'm saying it right uh, but this is just a classic pink it reminds me of Angelique in a lot of ways it's a classic pink opens up a little bit white gets more pink as it ages uh, nice just big peony shaped blooms nice and ruffled I do like how it has that little bit of green on the outer petals I think it always looks nice and adds a nice effect uh, mine were a little bit scented I had there was a little bit of scent coming off but nothing too pronounced um, just overall a very solid cut flower I think next tulip to bloom was one called adore this one was new to me and one of the main reasons that I ordered this one was of course because the pictures that I saw online were hot pink and you know, you already know if you've been on the channel for any length of time, I can't resist anything that, that's hot pink. And I really, really love this one. Uh, this is beautiful. I love this kind of a mid-range shade of pink. It's not dull like Amazing Grace, but it's not uh, muted and pastel. It's kind of a vibrant showy like, here I am, I'm pink. I'm proud of it. I'm not ashamed that I'm pink. I really like this one. I think I would definitely want to grow this one again. Next up, we have a variety that is called Pink Star. And Pink Star is right. This Pink Star is the star of the garden. This is a beautiful one. I think this one could go up there and compete with La Bella Pac. It's It's got to be getting popular. It's gorgeous. Um, it opens up pink, but... Early on, there are these tones of this bright kind of salmon orange color that almost makes the inner petals of these start to glow. And the color combination is so enchanting. I did my best to kind of uh, get that on film. I tried, but in person, the color combination of this tulip is absolutely stunning. I would love to grow an entire row of these. These are absolutely gorgeous. Gold star for pink star. It's wonderful. Next. To bloom was a variety called Charming Beauty. Uh, I've grown Charming Beauty before in the past. In the past when I've grown it, the stems are really short, but actually this year the stems on these were very, very long. And I was very happy to see that. 
Um, the color on these is a little bit of a soft yellow with tinges of kind of a light pastel pink around the edges and the petals. The pink becomes a little more pronounced as they age. It's an absolutely beautiful color combination. Uh, my stems were nice and strong. They looked really great with a lot of daffodils and different ranunculus this year. I could not be more pleased with these. Very nice. Green Spirit was the next tulip to begin blooming here in the yard. These are a kind of creamy pastel white yellow color. Uh, when they first begin to open up, the green on the outer edges of the petals is a little more pronounced and you can see there's green on the inside as well. Uh, as they get a little bit older, the green kind of fades a little bit. So if you want to see that green, you really got to focus on picking them early. Uh, they were really beautiful as kind of like a neutral colored flower to work in with daffodils and kind of different pastel ranunculus and things like that. So uh, I was very happy to see that. Definitely just a good solid single tulip to add to the yard, I think, for cut flowers. The next tulip is another double. This one was called Jean Quieres or something like that. Uh, it's probably like French or something. I'm not saying it right. Anyway, uh, they are white, but they have these unique kind of burgundy, deep wine, kind of wine pink color markings. They're very similar to Drumline, but instead of just having the, the specks on the outside, they have more um, just splotching everywhere, I guess. I would describe it and the centers are a little bit creamy colored when they first open which is very beautiful uh, they went really really nice with some of my darker pink ranunculus that I really really liked those you know that combination with the stems were so tall too such long stems beautiful stems oh beautiful stems great next we have one called black hero Black Hero is a classic staple in my garden. I love this tulip. It is so dark and mysterious. The stems are tall and strong. You can see here in, these, in this video, you can see the Black Hero stems are standing way tall above everyone else here in the yard. And um, the form stays tight for a nice long time. So I have plenty of time to pick the flower and use it and cut flower arrangements and everything like that. I just... Um, I can't say enough good things about it. The, the dark color goes with a wide range of different colors for flower arranging. Uh, just really, really lovely. Definitely one I'd like to keep around. Next, we have another variety of tulip. This one is called Party Clown. And this is another one that I didn't actually order. This is yellow and red striped fringe tulips. This is definitely not something that I would actively seek out but you know what um they're pretty they're they're pretty nice i'm not going to complain because they are actually pretty nice and i enjoyed the challenge of making a flower arrangement with them because i get stuck in my my ways sometimes and it's good to explore other stuff and other options and i actually kind of like these they actually are kind of growing on me so that's good Next is another single tulip. I'm not going to try to pronounce this one. Unfortunately, I didn't have too many of these. This was kind of like the result of a mixed bag of tulips. But I did want to show you them. They were very nice. Uh, kind of that blend of orange and pink that you see so often. Fun to work into flower arrangements as well. Uh, after that one bloomed, the next flower to start blooming was Mango Charm. If you watched the video from last year, the tulip tour from last year, you know that I love Mango Charm. It starts out very orange and over time it fades to this beautiful pink kind of lavender color that you're seeing here in this video. Um, this was one of the tulips that failed in my garden again this year, so I was really disappointed. These were only the only Mango Charm tulips that I got. I definitely encourage you to check out that other video if you want to see Mango Charm in their full glory. I'm going to try again next year. I think it was just a fluke from the supplier. Hopefully that will all be worked out or um, hopefully I'll amend my beds or fix my beds. Whatever happened. Who knows. Um, the next one is one called Pink Impression. Uh, I had a bunch of these but for some reason I didn't get much video of them. So I do apologize. But they're just... Uh, these kind of darker, this darker shade of pink. Um, pink impression are pretty pretty common, especially in like store mixes. So you probably have seen that one. Also wanted to show you one called Red Princess. Uh, I had ordered Red Princess in hopes that it would be a little bit darker. And as it would turn out, it's pretty red. 
Um, at least this was labeled Red Princess, so I assume that the label is correct. Even though it is more of a brighter shade of red than I expected, at least here in my yard, the flowers are huge. The flowers are big and double, and they really are impressive. So if you like red flowers, I think this might be a good one. Um, next up here, um, and I think this is the last one, I had Lambada. Uh, Lambada is a beautiful fringe tulip, a nice combination of this kind of pinkish red color and a bright orange. It is such a beautiful, um, it's, the markings are just gorgeous. I love how they seemingly glow. They glow in flower arrangements in the yard, everything. I love them. I know that this tulip video was a little bit shorter than the one that I did last year, and, um, the main reason for that is I just didn't order as many different varieties. I had more kind of quantities instead of, um, you know, number of varieties, especially in the yard this year. But I hope that it was helpful just, you know, getting to take a look which ones I did grow. Hopefully um, it's helpful to get to see what they really look like because I know it's frustrating when you're trying to order bulbs and you want to see what the bulbs really look like. And you see these kind of generic catalog pictures and the colors are all off, you know, and they don't look true to, true to type, but hopefully it was helpful. Um, as always, feel free to leave your comments down uh, below. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions or, um, you know, anything like that. I do try to answer all the comments. Um, sometimes in the spring and the summer, though, I get way behind on answering comments just because I'm doing so much stuff in the yard. I got so much stuff going on trying to get these videos going and everything, but I do try to get around to them eventually. As always, all the links to all my stuff is down in the comments below as well. Links to uh, the blog and the garden planner and, um, you know, Patreon and the subscription box and all this stuff is down there. I just, I sincerely want to say thank you for watching this. It really means a lot to me, especially if you made it to this point where I'm sitting here rambling. Uh, it really does mean a lot. I'm, I appreciate you so much because without, without each one of you, it really wouldn't be possible for me to do that. And uh, I just, I realize how thankful I should be for that. I hope that you are having such an incredible day and I hope it's bright and sunny wherever you are. I hope your garden is growing well. I hope it's beautiful. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.